Oh, damn! Hi, my name is Kenan. I just witnessed a car accident in front of my school. I'm freaking out. Come, please help. Do you know if anybody's injured? Yes, there's, there seem to be people trapped. Please excuse the interruption. It is with great sadness that I inform you that today, a few of our students have lost their lives due to a drug-related accident. Please excuse the interruption. I am sorry to inform you that AV has lost some of its dearest students in a drunk driving-related accident. Charlene Yvette Aysworth, 17, was put to rest on April 14, 2014. She remains in the hearts of her mother, Maria, her siblings, Charles and Lawrence, and her closest friends, Gabriel, Beverly, Ashikia, and Lauren. It's heartbreaking hearing my name, especially because I know how much hard work that I put into. It's sad to just see that it could be taken away so quickly, and my classmates as well, because they're all my closest friends. And to know that they're not going to get a chance to go to college or pursue all these big dreams we have is scary. Alwyn Saracuna. Died Monday, April 14, 2014, Lancaster. He was 18 years old. He was born on November 26, 1995, in the Philippines. He attended Antelope Valley High School and planned to go to San Jose University. Hey, my friends, like their name being called on the like on the intercom, it's like it gets to you. You you never like really expect to like hear it, but being what it is. It happens all the time, but it's really just to hear it for like the first time account of it, it it just really gets to you. To hear that every 15 minutes someone dies from a drunk driving or distracted driving accident, it's very realistic, but it's, it's heartbreaking because that's the reality of what today is and that's not how things should be. We shouldn't be drinking in the first place and definitely not driving. Mohammed Damanhuri, 17, was put to rest on April 14, 2014 and survived by his parents. Two older brothers. I really hope that it gets them that they shouldn't be drinking and driving, that it's a bad thing to do. Like, we're in high school, we shouldn't be drinking. It's, we should keep our mind in check. Like, we're supposed to be in school, we're not supposed to be drinking, we're not supposed to really be like doing things we shouldn't do. And I just really hope that more people like wouldn't like drink because of this. But when you get on scene, it is an, it is an impact to see uh, young people involved in an accident when you know this, how serious it is, especially when you walk on and it's obvious that somebody is uh, deceased at the scene. This is what happens when you drink and drive. Driver now? Hey, I want you to see about man. All right. Hey, uh, what's your name? Andrew. You all right, Andrew? All right. You know where you are right now? Now you all right? You think you might be able to get out of the car for me? Are your legs hurt? You sure? All right, why don't you go and sit by the car for me? When you come up on the scene, of course, the first thing you're going to do is um, you want to make sure people are okay. So, <laughs> oh, my leg. so you're going to check for injured. Um, you're going to go and do an immediate triage. Um, those that obviously have no pulse and aren't breathing, we move on go to the person that may or may have a better chance of being um, saved by medical personnel. We'll work on him. Uh, we triage the area and then obviously we start to focus on the, um, the injured to get them taken care of, get them off scene, and then from there we will then move on to our investigation. I think we're... Watch your left arm there. I can smell the alcohol, so I need to determine whether or not you're under the influence. Do you understand? All right, so why don't you go ahead and do me a favor and step out here for me, right here. I think everyone's gonna really be shocked. Like most of the kids around here, they really don't see accidents. So seeing like one just out in the front of the school, they'd be really shocked to see what actually happened in an accident. 
I hope that they take away that this is serious and this isn't some like this isn't a joke. This is a serious issue and it does happen every day. It's very serious and I hope that they take it to heart. Honestly, you can never prepare yourself for coming along an accident scene and seeing young people involved. I cannot move my legs. My legs are not moving, sir. Whether they're injured or whether or not they're deceased on scene, the impact is something that's very difficult to describe. I really don't think anyone should drink and drive. It's, it's like a big problem. Like You don't have control over what you're doing. It's really just a mistake to do it in general. Like You put everyone in danger when you do it. It's just completely wrong. We want to make sure that they understand that uh, you, know, you can take it lightly, get behind the wheel after you've had a drink or two, um, but that's all it takes for some people is a drink or two. You're not only putting your lives at risk, but you're putting the lives of everybody in the car with you and everybody in other cars around you. You're putting the entire neighborhood in danger because of your stupid actions. Honestly, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no way that there's no formula that we use to say who does or doesn't. Um, it's not to say that always it's the right front passenger or it's always passengers, it's never the DUI driver. But it, it has been a, an unusual phenomenon that it does appear that a lot of times the passengers are the ones that lose their lives. All right, go ahead and look at your hand, follow it. When I tell you to, you're going to tilt your head back and you're going to estimate 30 seconds in your mind. When you think that you've reached 30 seconds, you're then going to look at me, let me know that you're finished. The hope is to save as many as we can so that they can see that this is not a good positive choice, obviously, and that the end result could be death. Are you Desiree Gomez's father? It's very uh, difficult. Uh, this is part of the job that we none of these uh, the officers liked. Seeing the parents' reaction is just it's always the same. It's you know as as a parent, it, it just crushes you when when you hear that, that you know the, that type of news. But unfortunately, for the, a lot of these parents in the Alamo Valley and throughout the state of California, this is reality. They, they, their doors are being knocked on, and they're getting these bad news. Sir, I have some bad news to give you. Uh, unfortunately, Desiree was uh, in a vehicle uh, which was involved in a horrific uh, traffic collision this morning in front of Alamo Valley High School. Okay. Uh, uh, she's I, I took her to school and I okay. told her I'm supposed to pick her up shortly. Okay, okay. Well, it can't be. Yeah. Fortunately, How do you know that's my daughter? Uh, she had her ID on her, her school ID. And sir, but I want to let you know that, you know, she, this tr horrific traffic collision actually, you know, Desiree didn't make it. She died at the scene. What? Um, I'm really, really sorry for your loss, sir. This can't be happening. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Are you a Shakia's mom? Yes, I am. Okay. Are you by yourself? Well, my daughters are here. Your daughters are here? Okay. Can you tell me where Shakia goes to school? At Low Valley High School. And can you confirm her date of birth for me? 229.96. Okay. I have some bad news to give to you. Give you. Uh, Shakia was involved in a horrible traffic collision this morning in front of Animal Valley High School, and unfortunately, she did not make it. She died there at the scene. Not, no, no, it be. Yes, unfortunately, it, it is her. Uh, we found her uh, school ID on her, oh, and God. that's how I was able to get the information to come and talk to you. For us, uh, we try. We we're sensitive as, as we can be because of the the, the events. Uh, and, and, and it does st stick with us. You know, some events stick with us longer, or you know, than others. But uh, you know, we're still human, uh, and this is the part of the, the job that we just don't don't like to do. Okay, you know where you're at right now? Ambulance. Ambulance. All right. You remember what happened to you? It is. No. What any of this? 
You can take a deep breath. Does that hurt when you breathe? Yeah. I'm gonna get you down to the hospital, all right? of 100. Pupils are unequal. Let's Drive get her taken it. care of and get her to CAT scan. Uh, you guys, somebody check for Adam's pulse. I'm losing femoral pulse, please. She is probably bleeding somewhere that I just can't figure out right now. So we're just going to keep giving her CPR, keep giving her blood, okay? Let's do a pulse check one more time. There's a bunch of blood in the belly. Okay, you guys, I just don't think there's anything more we can do. Uh, 1041, time of death. Don't know yet if he's going to be able to fix it. Okay. I'm going to get two units of pack cells quickly. And I think two, let's get two big lines. Give me a cordis, I'll put a cordis in. Pack cells. Somebody feel crowded out of the camera pulse. Anything? Anything? No pulse. To jail. Yes, you are going to jail. How, how is my girlfriend and my friend? Uh, well, last I heard, she didn't make it, man. How she not make it? Uh, unfortunately, when you hit the other car, she got ejected out the window. So that's why you're being charged with felony DUI. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to place your lips around the tube, take a nice deep breath, and blow into the device nice and steady and hard until I tell you to stop. All right, you can stop. It says that you have a .12, so you are definitely over the legal limit. So, go ahead and stand up for me. Do you have any medical problems? Are you taking medication for anything? Are you suicidal? Are you off parole information? When I take your cuffs off, I want you to go ahead and place your hand, once it's out of the cuff, on the glass. You understand? Yeah. And take your socks off. Do not sling them off. Take them off nice and slow, and then turn them inside out. Step inside. Right in there, all four fingers. Press down evenly. There you go. You can go ahead and have a seat. Hello, Mom. Is she like a belly or something? I don't know. It sucks.
are on the record of the case of People State of California versus Andrew Allegria, MA054401. Defendant is present, good counsel, people are represented. And uh, we are here today for sentencing. Starting with the people, any victim impact statements they wish to present? Yes, sir. People will be presenting four statements. How happy and full of joy my brothers has always been. He will be the kind of person who's in the morning will wake up, take a shower, sing. And of course, the singing is just not there anymore. And he's joy for life and his way of waking up everyone is gone too. He's been going to therapy and trying hard to recover and we know there is no chances of him recovering his legs function or the hips function. She was looked upon as a great role model and leader. She was an exceptional child, loving, cheerful, and full of energy. You, Andrew, decided to take our princess away. We will never hug her, kiss her, tell her how much we loved her. Her death has impacted us in many ways that many of you may never understand and hope you never have to endure. April 14, 2014 was the worst day of my life. I cannot find the words to describe how Ashikia's death has impacted my life and the life of her father and brothers and sisters. I am angry. Everyone is missing her. I am so hurt by someone, a friend of hers, young, drinking and driving and being so careless. And how could you take the life of a friend, even if you're sorry, it doesn't help. We're asking that he gets the maximum sentence possible. Thank you, ma'am. It's left an empty hole, an empty hole in our lives to see him in the hospital, begging, being, being back. It was the worst experience in my whole life, and I've never, ever, ever wanted a parent to go through the experience I went through. Part of my heart was broken. I'll never be repaid. I just hope that you, from now on you make the right decisions and not take anybody else, anybody else for granted or make the wrong decisions from now on. His father, Juan Acosta, back in his day. He has seen a lot of heartaches in his life. Yet he has managed to turn it around and has a bright future ahead of him. He has worked so hard to get to the point that he is now. He has made a lot of very smart choices in his teenage years and has made one bad. There may be remorse after the fact, but remorse does nothing to undo the horrific effects of his actions. And so the people ask for the max maximum sentence to ensure the safety of the community punish the defendant for his selfish decisions, and send a message to future offenders that drinking and driving do not pay. The court ought to consider that this was one very bad choice uh, that resulted unfortunately in the death of, of these four victims uh, and the injury uh, to uh, Mr. Castillo. The defendant will first serve his eight year determinate sentence, then begins, begin his indeterminate sentence of 30 years to life. This may have been your first contact with the court, your first uh, bad decision, your first lapse of judgment, but it'll be your last. Your father asked for mercy for you. But my response to that was, where was your mercy for your five classmates, four of which you killed, and the fifth you left paralyzed for the rest of his life? But to everyone in this courtroom and everyone in this community, no matter how smart a person may be, how strong they may be, or how successful that person may be, whether they're 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, all the way up through the years. No one, and I mean no one, can avoid the physical and mental effects of alcohol and or drugs. So if you make the decision to drink alcohol or take drugs, and you better make the decision not to drive, because if you do, you'll be the next defendant before this court. Mr. Allegria, mercy. You showed no mercy to the four you killed in the fifth that you left permanently injured. I did show you some mercy, but you will still have to suffer the consequences of that slight sentence for the crimes that you chose to commit. Then it is remanded to the custody of the Sheriff's Department for delivery to the Department of Corrections.
be